The road to WrestleMania 40 is upon us and the Royal Rumble is on the horizon, one of my favorite events of the year, and we're going to break down everything to do with the men's 2024 Royal Rumble match. You guys are probably used to seeing prediction action figure matches of the Royal Rumble for me. It's been a tradition since 2016. Unfortunately, that tradition is ending this year. I just prefer to do my own storylines with WSC and I just am not enjoying doing WWE prediction matches, although I am very interested in getting into the discussion of the 2024 Royal Rumble. There's a lot of interesting stuff to cover here. So we're going to get into it and we are going to start off by predicting all 30 entrants of the Men's Royal Rumble. Now these are the guys who have been announced already and this is a very small amount of people to be announced compared to previous years. They've announced like 27, 29 of the 30 entrants in previous years. Sometimes they've done that and then cut some of those people from the actual Rumble. They probably realized at the time when they were booking it like oh these guys don't really fit in to the creative of it like they cut out Otis, Tucker, Murphy, Rusev and Lashley from the 2020 Royal Rumble so they've done it before but I don't think any of these guys will be cut. Now we got to fill up six rows of five superstars so let's get right into that and let's justify who's going to be in the match and why. So starting off we are going to have Finn, Bella, Damian Priest tag team partner. It just makes sense that if Damian Priest is in it, Finn Balor would also be in it. Also, Dominic Mysterio, Dirty Dom. You know he's definitely going to be in it. So let's put him there. Now, I don't have a JD McDonough figure, but I feel like, you know, leave him out. He's kind of like a, the little run of the group. Just leave him out. There's so many other people that I would prefer to have in the match. He could very well be in it, but I would leave him out here. I would also put in our truth because of the whole storyline with the Judgment Day. You know, they're going to do something funny there. I can't quite pinpoint exactly what they're going to do. And it's been a long time since there's been a Royal Rumble 2. Next, we're going to have Jinder Mahal. I think with everything that's been going on with Jinder, he's definitely going to be in the Royal Rumble. So that's cool there. Next, we have Carmelo Hayes. He's been featured on SmackDown quite a bit. And he was going to have that match with Austin Theory where if he won, he would be in the Royal Rumble. So you know they're already gearing him up to be in the Royal Rumble. Now, is it counted as a surprise entry, Carmelo Hayes? I'm not really sure. I guess you can say that. Is he going to be the only NXT superstar in the match? We'll have to wait and see. Next, we have Karrion Cross, And I think Cross will be in it because Bobby Lashley is in it. And Cross is feuding with Lashley. So surely he will be in it. Next, we have a thank you, Chad Gable, and he's been killing it, so he's going to be in the Royal Rumble. He's been in the past few years. He will definitely be in the match. Then we have Austin Theory, big Austin Theory fan myself. He will be in the Royal Rumble. He's been feuding with Carmelo Hayes. And you'll notice in all this that it's predominantly Raw superstars. Uh, they don't have many singles stars from SmackDown. We have Grayson Waller. He'll be in there with Austin Theory as well for sure. Then we have a little bit of a gamble, but not really. If you're looking at previous years, I always thought like, why, why can't we just cut Xavier Woods from the match when I've always booked it? But it seems every year they always put Xavier Woods in the Royal Rumble with Kofi. So I think it's a safe bet that Xavier Woods would be in it. Although I would honestly kind of cut him for like a surprise entrant or something. I think it's a safe bet that he he will be in the match with Kofi because they've done it year after year after year. Next, we have Otis. I mean, we have Chad Gable in there. They like to complete tag teams. Otis is awesome too, so I'd love to see Otis in there, and I think he will be. Next, we have The Miz. Miz will definitely be in the Royal Rumble, no question about it. All right, so that's 20 superstars so far. Now we have two more rows to complete. Who's going to be in there? Well, it's going to be Santos Escobar, definitely going to be in the Royal Rumble. Then we got Big Bronson Reed, definitely going to be in the Royal Rumble. Another big boy who's been on TV and looking dominant, it's Ivar. He's been killing it. He'll be in his first Royal Rumble. Then surely main event Jey Uso will be in the Royal Rumble by himself. And now it's really crunch time. Now this is the conversation that we need to dive into because I think all these guys are pretty much guarantees to be in the Royal Rumble match. You could disagree with me. Comment down below if you think. But I think all these guys are pretty much guaranteed with their TV exposure over the past few weeks. So who else is going to fill up these last six spots? 
Now we have Carlito who has been featured on TV pretty regularly over the past month. Now he could be give or take. I could see him getting injured by Santos Escobar on SmackDown this coming weekend, but I think that he will probably be in the Royal Rumble and I would like to see him in the Royal Rumble. Now here's where we start canceling some people out. We have Pete Dunne, but oh, Pete Dunne now, Pete Dunne and now he has created some buzz coming back as Pete Dunne. I could very well see him in the Royal Rumble, but I just don't think there's enough spots for him and he's in a tag team with Tyler Bate, so I don't think that he will be in the Royal Rumble. Next we have Dragon Lee. Now this is not a Dragon Lee figure. It's obviously a Kalisto, but this would be the placeholder. And Dragon Lee was featured pretty heavily on TV for the past few months, but that was like back in November, October. Now it's January and he's been stuck on NXT with the North American Championship. I don't know if he's going to get a spot in the Royal Rumble because he hasn't been on SmackDown for the past few weeks, and I don't think he would be the NXT guy to get the spot, so I think they might leave Dragon Lee out. Then we have Ricochet, who has not been on TV in the past two months. He's a great talent. I think he should definitely be in the Royal Rumble, but considering he hasn't been on TV, when is the last Royal Rumble where someone who hasn't been on TV for two months has gotten a spot in the Royal Rumble? I believe last year I tried to predict that Shinsuke Nakamura would return in the Royal Rumble. He was left off TV for months, and he didn't make it back to WWE until after WrestleMania. So sometimes they do like to do that, where they don't bring him back in the Royal Rumble, but they like to bring him back after WrestleMania, especially if they have no plans for him. So maybe Ricochet might miss out here. I'm not going to put him in the match. Now we have another interesting case in Omas. The giant Omas has been in the last few Royal Rumbles, and he was in the SummerSlam Battle Royal 2 as a surprise. They can't seem to find what to do with him, but will he be in the Royal Rumble? I think so, because they like to have their Giants in the Royal Rumble, and, you know, he's been off TV for months, he's on the live events and stuff. If he's gonna show up anywhere, it has to be the Royal Rumble, right? God damn it, Amas. Now we're getting into surprise entrant territory. They always limit it to about four to three surprise entrants per year. We're talking returns, NXT superstars, and debuts, perhaps. Let's rule some people out. We're talking MJF. Now, I think he's probably re-signed with AEW, the former AEW world champ. I wish he came to WWE. I would love to see him in WWE. Maybe he will just wait a little longer, have a little bit longer of a run in AEW, then come to WWE. And he also has a torn labrum, so that's probably a contributing factor as well. So he won't be in the match, and if he is, I'll pop really big. Solo Sokoa, I don't think he'll be in the match. I predicted that Solo would be in the match last year. I was wrong, and yeah, he's going to be busy with Bloodline Business with Roman Reigns. I don't think they would have him in it and not announce it, so I don't think Solo will be in it. Jimmy Uso could very well be in it to do something with Jay Uso in the match and maybe set up the WrestleMania match, but I do not think he will be in it. He'll be busy like Solo in the main event or whatever, whenever the Fatal 4-Way happens. It's usually a rule of thumb if you have a match earlier in the night that you will not be in the Royal Rumble match. And I don't think anyone from the Fatal 4-Way match or the United States Championship match will be in. Although I wouldn't be surprised to see Logan Paul do double duty and, you know, create some viral moments. Okay, let's talk returns. Rey Mysterio, I believe, will be ready and recovered from his injuries and will be in the Royal Rumble match, setting up some stuff with Santos Escobar and possibly Dominic Mysterio for WrestleMania. Sami Zayn will return in the Royal Rumble match, I believe. I think this would be the right spot for Sami Zayn to return and get a little bit of revenge on Drew McIntyre for injuring him. Now, if all this is correct, and it may be, it may not be, but we'll be left with two spots left in the Royal Rumble match. It's a pretty stacked field. I mean, it's hard to narrow it down. But who is going to fill those two spots? Is it going to be Big E? Is Big E ready to return to the ring? And will they start a feud with Gunther and Imperium? I don't think so. I think, I don't know, I, I just don't have the feeling that Big E will return. I would love it if he did, but I just don't see it happening. 
Let's talk about another guy who hasn't been on TV for months. It's Sheamus. Sheamus is awesome, but I, I just don't see him being in the Royal Rumble match. I don't think there's really much of a purpose for him if there's no storyline for him going forward. I don't see what kind of WrestleMania match he would have. So I think we could just leave him out for now and have him return on SmackDown or night after WrestleMania. Not everyone has to return the Rumble. But speaking of return, everyone's talking about it. Andrade from AEW. Coming back to the WWE, I believe this is going to happen. He's going to fill one of these spots and be in the Royal Rumble. Is he going to be babyface? Is he going to be heel? Probably a heel, but he'll get a good reaction regardless. Now, another guy from AEW that could show up is Ty Dillinger, Sean Spears, could return to WWE. I just don't really see it happening. You know, Ty Dillinger wasn't that great anyways. I mean, I enjoyed him in 2017. He was killing in NXT, but looking back, he was, he was kind of a jobber. He was kind of, he was kind of mid, so I don't know. I think if you're going to bring him back, he would need a serious repackage. Maybe bring him back to NXT. I just don't think the Royal Rumble would be the place. Now, for years, I've been predicting that X-Pac would be in a Royal Rumble match and make a cool return. But, you know, in 2016, I predicted this and in 2022. And it seems like he's ready to go. But looking at him now, he's kind of not in the best shape. You know, I, I, why why churn out these old guys when you have such a great roster of talent? You don't necessarily need him there, so I don't think X-Pac will be in the Royal Rumble. One person that could be who I've also been predicting for years is Rob Van Dam. He is still in great shape. He has been on AEW TV recently, and I think he could be in the Royal Rumble. I'm just not going to put him in because... You know, I think someone else will take that spot, but he very well could be in the Royal Rumble. And usually there is a legend kind of old timer spot in the Royal Rumble. It usually happens every year. I just don't see it this year because there's a lot of surprise returns that could happen. We have an NXT guy, Bron Breaker. I would love to see him in the Royal Rumble doing something, spearing everybody. He's got the best spear in the business. I would love to see him in. I just don't see how he could take a spot from any of these guys. You could maybe take out Carlito, possibly. But you also got to think, you need your jobbers in the match to be eliminated, you know? You got to have people that get eliminated. So... I don't know. I think you have to kind of keep Carlito in and some of these other guys who could be considered jobbers or whatever or lower on the card. So you maybe take a mass out. Maybe they don't do a mass. But I think the guy that will fill the last spot is the Beast, Brock Lesnar, to set up something for WrestleMania. We haven't seen him since SummerSlam. He hasn't missed a Royal Rumble pay-per-view in years. I, th I don't think he has missed a Royal Rumble pay-per-view except for 2021 with the whole Thunderdome era. But Brock Lesnar, I feel like he will take that last spot there. And this is my field completed of the Royal Rumble of who I think will make the 30-man cut. Now let's talk about who's going to be number one and number two in the Royal Rumble match. I always like to predict this every year. Year, and I don't always get it right. I Most of the time, I don't <laughs> get it right. But this year, I think a lot of people are saying Cody Rhodes. And last year, a lot of people were saying Cody Rhodes and Seth were going to be number one and number two. And that's what I predicted last year. Gunther and Sheamus were great, though. But Cody Rhodes as number one this year could very well be the case, especially if he doesn't win the match. I'm going to go out on a whim here and say that it's going to be someone else. It's usually going to be someone who's announced for the match. So I'm going to go with number one, Drew McIntyre. He's had a great storyline going into this, had a great character arc over the past few months, slowly turning heel. I think he's going to start out number one. I think he's going to be one of the Iron Man, maybe the Iron Man, and have a really good Royal Rumble match. Number two, though, usually the superstars who start out number one and number two, they usually have some history with each other. So I'm going to say it could be either two people. It could be either Bobby Lashley or Jey Uso. I'm going to go with Jey Uso so he can do his whole entrance with the crowd participation. And I think it'd be really cool number one and two. You know, while I'm at it, I'll predict a couple more entrants. Number three, I think would be cool if it was Jinder Mahal, so they could do a little three-man band kind of thing, Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre teaming up on Jey Uso. Maybe number four is 
Carlito or something, he comes in and he gets eliminated by Drew and Jinder so that Drew can get an elimination there. And then maybe number five, it's Cody Rhodes. And then Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso team up on Jinder and Drew, hit that 1D, the well, Cody Cutter 1D, whatever they call it, get rid of Jinder. And yeah, and then Cody Rhodes can be in the Royal Rumble for a long time without having to be number one, which would be very cliche in my opinion, but it may very well happen. A fun idea I had for the Royal Rumble, over the past few months on Raw, they've been having Monday night meet all the big boys finding out Otis, Ivar, Bronson Reed. I would love if all three of them were in the ring at the same time. You get kind of a Spider-Man moment. They're all <laughs> not literally like pointing at each other, but they all start duking it out in the Royal Rumble. But then you could add Omas. Omas into the mix with the Monday Night Meet and they all duke it out in the Royal Rumble. I think that would be really cool and it could set up some stuff for Omas because they clearly don't know what to do with him. Maybe even Brock Lesnar comes into the mix and then he takes on all of them. That would be just too much meat for one match. That would just be too much beef, too much meat for one match. And I think that would be really cool if Brock mixed it up with them. I've been calling for Brock to eliminate Amas in a Royal Rumble for ages. They fought at last year's WrestleMania. I think they could mix it up in the match. I would also love to see R-Truth interact with Brock Lesnar in some way. I think if they could figure out what to do with that, that would be really fun. I could also see if like, I, I don't know, cause they might want to keep the Judgment Day thing going on for a little bit more, but I could see R-Truth like eliminating Damian Priest or something, maybe on accident or something like that, something goofy. R-Truth is going to do something weird. Uh, as for Kofi Kingston's surprise or save spot in the Royal Rumble, I have no idea what he could do anymore. He's literally done everything, tried everything. Over the past few years, he's failed his save spots. So yeah, man, if he can come up with some stuff, great. But if not, like, no pressure. He, do he shouldn't need to do that stuff anymore. Like, there's literally, like, what, what else can he do? But now let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about who's going to win and who's going to be the final four. Now, I think it'd be very easy to say that the final four would be Drew McIntyre, Gunther, CM Punk, and Cody Rhodes. But I think there's a couple different things you could do here. Now, I feel like Gunther, CM Punk, and Cody Rhodes would definitely be in the final four. I think you could give or take Drew here because I think if Sami Zayn does enter the Rumble, they may hold it off for later, but I think this would be a right place for him to come in and maybe set up a drew Sami WrestleMania match. Sami Zayn could eliminate Drew, maybe Sami makes it to the Final Four, or maybe it's Bobby Lashley, or perhaps it's Brock Lesnar. I'm going to say that it's Bobby Lashley because, you know, all three of these guys are Raw guys. Let's show some love to a SmackDown guy and let's show some love to Bobby Lashley because he, he, he needs some respect. Now, how does Brock Lesnar get eliminated? I believe that Gunther eliminates Brock Lesnar clean, just like Bobby Lashley, just like, well, I guess Drew didn't do it clean in 2020, but he eliminated Brock. I feel like Gunther will do the same thing and set up a feud for them at WrestleMania because what else is Brock going to do at WrestleMania? He has to be there. He has to have a match. There's some other options for Brock. I could see Brock versus Drew running a back in front of a live audience the match we never got that was supposed to be a wrestlemania main event that could very well be a singles match at wrestlemania that's an option there other than that i don't really see many options for brock lesnar in terms of who we can face solo skull would be kind of cool but i think brock should be done with the bloodline done with roman reigns so yeah i feel like gunther is the perfect guy now the rumor is that it's going to be gunther versus seth rollins and it's going to be CM Punk versus Cody Rhodes after the whole Raw thing. There, there was a rumor or a report out there that that's going to be the match and it's going to be Rock versus Roman Reigns. Now, that could be very cool. I just think that, you know, CM Punk and Cody should be in the championship matches. But then again, like if you have a chance to do Rock and Roman, you know, you should definitely do that. Now, I don't think The Rock's going to be in the Royal Rumble. You guys might be thinking, uh, why didn't you put The Rock here? I don't think The Rock's going to be in the Royal Rumble. You know, he very well could if he's going to face Roman, but I don't think he needs the Royal Rumble to get Roman. He could just do that with a promo. I think whoever wins the Royal Rumble needs to win the Royal Rumble to solidify one of the matches at WrestleMania. Now, you do have the Elimination Chamber, so whoever doesn't win here could go on to the Elimination Chamber and win that. So, who's going to win the match? 
I think that Gunther's going to face Brock at Mania. I think Brock needs an opponent. Gunther's the perfect guy for that. Now, you also have to think Seth's injury might have shifted plans here. You know, maybe CM Punk was supposed to win, but now that Seth is injured and there's a little bit more question marks about that WrestleMania match, maybe they go with Cody here. Now, they might want to make history and have Cody join the list of people who've won back-to-back Royal Rumbles. I just prefer new winners added to the history books. I think it should always be that way, not repeat winners. You know, I just prefer to add new people to the history books, elevate new people. CM Punk has never won a Royal Rumble match. He needs to win the Royal Rumble. That is my pick to win. CM Punk, he needs to win his first match back in WWE televised. He's done a live event, but this is the first match back. If it is indeed Cody versus Roman at WrestleMania, he does not need the Royal Rumble to win. Yes, he is a Raw superstar, but the brand split, you know, it's not like it's not like 2003. The WWE does not care. Look at the field of competitors here. They used to do 15 from Raw, 15 from SmackDown in 2003. They used to make it fair. They don't care anymore. They There's literally like 70% of these guys are Raw guys because SmackDown doesn't have any singles guys, basically. So, yeah, they don't care. Like, there's so many ways around it. Cody will find a way to get into the Elimination Chamber on the SmackDown side. He will win that, and he will get to Roman if that is indeed the plan. They might hold off the Rock match until the next year's WrestleMania, and Roman may retain at WrestleMania and break Hulk Hogan's record, becoming the third longest reigning champion of all time. It could very well happen, so prepare for it. But it would suck for Cody losing twice in a row, so who knows. I think maybe Cody does finish his story this year at WrestleMania. As much as I would love to see CM Punk and Cody Rhodes one-on-one at WrestleMania, that also leaves Seth Rollins not in the main event of WrestleMania. I feel like this match would definitely main event WrestleMania over Seth and Gunther, so... Yeah, that's a little unfair to Seth. I think Seth versus CM Punk is the match to go with Roman and Cody. Or, I mean, I would like to see Cody and Randy too. Like, I'm doing that with WSC and we're going to have a banger match there. But I'm putting my money on CM Punk. I think he definitely needs to win this match, set up that match for WrestleMania. He deserves that WrestleMania main event. And he is going to win the Royal Rumble by last eliminating Cody Rhodes. It's going to be a heartbreak. It's going to be like Shawn Michaels 2010. He's going to find another way. If Cody or Gunther win, I will be fine with it too. I, I just think that CM Punk will win. And I would like to see that. But Gunther winning also elevates a new star. So that's cool too. So this Royal Rumble, there's a lot of possibilities. A lot of hype. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below. Do you agree with my justification of all these guys? Do you think think some of them can be subbed out for other people do you think this is a good field comment down below let me know what you think is going to happen at the 2024 royal rumble thank you guys for watching this video smash the like button subscribe to the channel i'll see you guys on the next video